Ten years ago, a gaming icon was officially rebooted and updated for a new generation, spanning so far a new trilogy, a standalone movie adaptation, and a solid fan base for this version of the franchise. Coming from Crystal Dynamics and published by Square Enix, Tomb Raider 2013 would introduce Lara Croft back into the gaming world with a new look, a full-on origin story, and an adventure changing up the gameplay to fit with more modern games, redefining the genre like the Uncharted series. Now with three major games under this new Lara Lara Croft's belt, as we await the future of where this franchise goes, was the 2013 reboot of the series truly a major step forward following in the footsteps of a series that followed in its original footsteps? Today, let's take a look back on the 2013 Tomb Raider and see how this game may or may not have given the series the breath of fresh air it needed. <laughs> As an origin story, we follow a young and bright-eyed Lara Croft who on an expedition to find a lost kingdom gets tangled in with some cult madness once her ship wrecks entering the Dragon's Triangle, as a severe storm engulfed them. Lara now finds herself stranded on the island, constantly surviving on the brink of death as she now must make her way off the island while also avoiding or fighting back against the island's inhabitants, as well as find and try and save her allies and maybe find some treasure along the way. The Lara you first meet at the start of this game and the one you know by the end of it are two different characters. Now having gone through so much, having to survive against strong and deadly foes, whether it be from the weapons they carry or the mystical powers at play, and taking one heck of a beating doing so. From the constant life-threatening moments to the over-the-top action set pieces, Lara is constantly never in a state of peace the whole time on this island. Following more in her father's footsteps after now seeing that the work he was doing had a point to it all and that he wasn't crazy all this time. Setting off from here, to continue on his legacy while carving out her own. The game itself is brutal. Having a mature rating, it doesn't hold back from some more gruesome moments, like all the possible death animations that you can and may encounter throughout your playthrough, helping set itself apart slightly more when it came to the Uncharted series comparisons, which this game has no worries in trying to hide that. The gameplay mechanics follow similar controls, the adventure and flow of the narrative, and of course, those really amazing to watch set pieces that make the most ridiculous unbelievable things a whole lot of fun to play. The reason why that this works as an origin story is that the team behind it really wanted to try something new, leading them to full-on not only reboot the character and the franchise as a whole, but really dig into who Lara is. What is her backstory? Why is she in this world that she's in? What can be done to play on these factors that will make this new Lara Croft special and yet still feel like the Lara Croft that we used to know at the end of the day? Kill me. Today and received the GameStop exclusive Tomb of the Lost Adventurer. In 2009, Square Enix came into the picture, now purchasing Eidos, and still having Crystal Dynamics work on the Tomb Raider series, who were no stranger to the series in the first place, with production being split on the franchise in two different ways, one set of games being made one way and a lot smaller, and the other heading towards what the reboot would be. The Tomb Raider franchise was seemingly full steam ahead on multiple fronts. The initial thought was to really change up what a Tomb Raider game could be. It needs to be this adventurous, action-filled experience, but now with a bigger emphasis on adding depth to the character of Lara and fleshing out the story as a whole. After an intense and deeply sought-out auditioning process for the perfect person to play Lara, who could really bring this new Lara to life, not only vocally but in full motion capture as well, meaning they'd have to really nail down a performance that makes us believe in the journey she is taking. They found their Lara in Camila Luddington, who would now take up the mantle of this character Character, adding in a hopeful and smart portrayal of the character, but building this stronger and more hardened tonality as the game would progress. And by that, the character progressing as well. When we meet Lara here in the reboot, she's only 21, with no real experience in anything that she has to go through aside from her smarts, truly having to break out of this shell and sometimes having to do things she really never wanted to do, or thought that she would ever have to do. In 2010, the game was pushing forward, giving everyone a hint at what this new Tomb Raider was going to be once a file 
handheld trademark would show off the tagline of the game, A Survivor is Born, cluing us into some sort of reboot or new take on the series as a whole in production, way before we would just come to know it officially as simply Tomb Raider. The team working on it was very excited about the game that they've been putting together. In 2012, leading up to the release, the game was delayed to early 2013 instead, but to keep the hype up that the game was building, a series of six documentary videos following different parts of the final hours of the game being made was released, giving us a look into the people working on the game, the nervousness of the first playable demo at E3 2012, and making sure the game passes certification in the end for the production to fully come to a finish for now. When it comes to the game itself, the biggest thing you'll notice when you see or play this game is that it's very familiar to what was already out there, a third-person experience that focused on some sort of shooting element like guns or bows, and a healthy mixing in of melee combat. This, like I mentioned, brought in the discussion of the Uncharted games and how this game had so much baked into it that was directly from the Uncharted series. Back in 2006, when the first Uncharted game came out, things were a bit different, with the first Uncharted game being dubbed Dude Raider, but with more guns than those previous Tomb Raider games. Plus, when it came to the combat, there was a nice blending in of stealth that would allow you to control how you handle large groups of enemies to fit your gameplay style, or to improvise if you didn't have much on you to fight with. And sure, there are some moments that just require you to hit some quick time event buttons, but they don't feel intrusive to the gameplay as you still get to do some fun and fast combat with any of the tools at your disposal. While yes, you can look at the Uncharted series itself and see the influences it had from Tomb Raider before, and other adventure stories like the Indiana Jones movies, Uncharted quickly started paving a new way to combine these gameplay aspects with detailed cinematics, an engaging story, and characters that felt like you were playing as or watching as leads in a movie. It pushed how polished and intricate a game could go, when at the base of it, it really just is another third-person action-adventure game. So it's not really about inventing something new, it was more of how you use the tools you have to create something unique. The older Tomb Raider games were more exploration and puzzle-focused, more so than traditional combat, but it still had its fair share. Uncharted also had a nice way of taking its style and flowing in puzzles to solve that feel important to progressing in your journey. Here in Tomb Raider 2013, the game followed suit with that as well, introducing puzzles into the style of the series that acted the same way in some cases, with more important and fun puzzles, and some that just feel like they're there to be there. Introducing the feature that I feel almost every game has at this point, where you can see your whole area but in different lighting to highlight important things. Whatever it's called, I call it detective mode because I remember it the most from the Batman Arkham games. And here, being called Survival Instinct, it allows you to see certain things highlighted to help you finish getting through a puzzle or an area. But one thing it would implement that would be all of its own was the survival factor, making you feel like you need to figure out how to survive on what you have or what you find around you. This salvaging system would be used to craft things in the game and become a lot more of a staple feature that would be fleshed out in the next game. Just like the leveling system here, which follows a traditional basic RPG-like setup where you pick areas of expertise that you want to spend your skill points in. While nothing here really pushed the gameplay to heights we hadn't seen before, it used all of its tools, just like Lara, to create a well-balanced, well-told, and really fun game that leaves you wanting more in excitement for the next installment. It also did have a multiplayer aspect that added in some fun modes to play with friends, offering some more barebone online experiences compared to other games, but at least there was something a little extra. But in this similar field, Uncharted had multiple games fleshing out their multiplayer, and maybe taking some cues from their multiplayer would have helped this one just a bit more to give it some more longevity. Despite how incredible the game may have seemed to come together, having all of this massive buildup, making sure everyone should be excited for what this reboot offers, it may not have lived up to the expectations of a company applying too much pressure on the title to succeed. Start your adventure today. What I like about 2013's Tomb Raider is that while it does have this uncharted formula, it doesn't copy the same tone that those games carry. Lara herself isn't as happy-go-lucky or joke-filled as Nathan Drake, helping set the stories told here with a lot more gravitas, from the story itself to the way characters deal with the situations presented to them, both games filling in a slot that feels great to have. But with Tomb Raider hitting a more mature rating and dealing with some more mature themes, the characters feel more realistic to the 
world that they are placed in. Now, Square Enix has these weird, extremely high expectations that usually end up in them with egg on their face, not being realistic with so many of their games under their publishing, expecting numbers that aren't always achievable regardless of brand recognition or not. Tomb Raider, for a reboot of the series, had a strong release, a very strong release, with a nice hype of excitement building leading up to it, coming in with over a million copies sold in the first two days and nearly quadrupling that within a month. Square Enix, however, was expecting somewhere in the ballpark of 6 million copies sold, which it surpassed no problem over time, hitting 8.5 million in sales by 2015, and today has sold nearly 15 million copies. Sure, the Definitive Edition releasing on the next-gen consoles at the time in 2014 helped push the series a lot more, but even initially, the game when it was released became the biggest game launch ever in the UK throughout a solid portion of 2013. But by March's end, another massive game came out, a game that we will be speaking about soon here on the channel, that within a smaller window did end up selling more, becoming the biggest hit of the month overall, Bioshock Infinite. Aside from however Square Enix felt about this, Crystal Dynamics themselves knew how great the game was doing, becoming the best-selling Tomb Raider game at the time. But within its initial year, Square Enix was perplexed at how all of these great ratings on the game didn't lead to even larger amounts of sales right away. By the end of 2013, it was claimed that now finally Tomb Raider was profitable, crossing a line that it needed to reach for Square Enix to be happy. But that's just big company doing big company things, I guess. I thoroughly enjoyed the reboot of Tomb Raider, and all these years later, I do think that this start to a new set of games was really good and well executed. And with where the series would go with both Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this version of Lara Croft has evolved into a very well-defined strong character of her own, having gone on three separate incredibly put-together adventures, showing the origins of Lara living up to and becoming the title of the game series, Tomb Raider. If you have not played the new series of Tomb Raider games, I definitely think that they're worth your time, both from a gameplay perspective and from a narrative one. If you have played them, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and tell me which one of the three is your favorite. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, later.